This is Gary Holt from Slayer and Exodus and you are watching Loudwire. Uh, first time I heard him, or you know, that was probably when Show No Mercy was recorded. You know, I don't think I'd ever even heard any demos or anything prior to that. But you know, we, we heard it, and myself and Paul Bailoff, we loved it. You know, it's like Slayer. You know, these guys are from L.A. You got to be kidding me. You know, it's like the land of big hair and everything. But uh, you know, they were. It was just like right up our wheelhouse, like you know, musically and stuff. And then we met, and. Uh, they played the Keystone Berkeley by themselves and then played with us at the infamous Ruthie's Inn the next day. And after the Keystone show, we just destroyed their hotel room, you know, with their permission, of course. And, uh, but it was a level of, uh, of carnage that had to be uh, admired, you know, it was pretty epic. And then the cops were coming and we scattered like cockroaches. But we told them they couldn't wear the, the eyeliner, you know, at Ruthie's, you know, it wouldn't go over well with the with the hardcore, you know, people that came to all of our shows there and they never wore it again. And, and we've been friends ever since. Cause we were just kids and we were just, you know, do, playing the music we loved, you know, the, the kind of music we wanted to hear. So we wrote it ourselves and like the Venom tour, we were touring with our heroes, you know? So every day was like Christmas and just get up. And I got photos of us at Soundcheck, you know, big tall can of Coors Light in the hand, you know, drinking at like, two in the afternoon on a gig day. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I found out through, you know, someone, someone texted me, I don't even remember who, and I called, you know, Carrie and to confirm it, and he told me it was true, you know, unfortunately. Everybody was trying to, like, come to grips and comprehend it, you know, when something like that happens. Uh, it's quite hard to believe that it's actually true, you know, it's like you don't want it to be. And so you, your mind's wrestling with, you know, so many emotions, you know, and for Carrie and Tom and, and Dave, who started the band with him, you know, it's like quite, you know, it's like a blow to the head with a sledgehammer, you know, so yeah. it's a lot to, lot to deal with. You know, he just, he did things his own way. And, um, and it, from the riffs to his solos, they were like uniquely him and, you know, some people like say, oh, I should play so Jeff solos the way Jeff did, but I, I don't think that's doing him justice trying to copy him, you know? You know, I'll keep little signature, little like melodies and stuff, especially in the early songs. But, uh, you know, I always say, you know, if you wanted someone to play him exactly like that, you, there's a million guys in Slayer tribute bands who do a better job than I am. You know, we play different, you know? It's like, he was just had his own style because it wasn't textbook, you know? It was very like, off the cuff and and he did exactly you know where he wanted to do it where i learned things you know through scale and structure i remember uh we did a show several years ago at uh, hellfest in france and uh, jeff actually came up to watch exodus set and everybody was like stunned because like jeff doesn't leave the bus to watch anybody play <laughs> so yeah you know, I, I take that as the highest compliment you know quite an honor you know that you got out of the bus to come watch us you know 